So we're, we are graphing rational functions. I'm going to repeat myself here because I want to record it. Graphing rational functions. Functions. Okay. So the, the first one, you're going to first graph the numerator and the denominator, and then you're going to simplify them if you can. So for example, on the very first one here, I've already factored them for you. Okay? So what do they have in common? Those two. So I could just cross it out, right? Now let's do the second one. How would I factor out the second one? The x plus 3 and x minus 3 over x plus 3. Right? So I could f cancel those two out. And the last one, if I were to factor that, in this last one, you definitely put it in the box method to solve for it. I've already done that just to save time. It'll be 2x minus 3 and x plus 6. And then that one, and that one would cancel. Okay? So... Now that I've done all that, we're going to look at three different things. We're going to look at domain, we're going to look at vertical asymptotes, and we're going to look at horizontal asymptotes. Okay? So, let's look at vertical asymptotes. Oh, no, domain first. Domain. What is the domain? All the possible values of x. Okay. So, when I mean by looking at possible values for x, the denominator has is very important for this because the denominator can never be 0. If the denominator is 0, then it is undefined. The function is undefined. So what we're looking at is all the factors that are in the denominator before we crossed any of them out. Okay? I'm going to show you in a minute. Look at what denominator. So we're looking at what the denominator had before it was simplified. Okay? So what I want to do now is go back to the note sheet right here. What were my two factors in my denominator? X plus 5 and X plus 4. So my domain for this can be any real number, and that's when I put that double-edged R for real number, but X cannot be, and, and in and in order to find out what X cannot be, it has to be something that will make a zero in the denominator. So X plus 5, how would I make that X a zero? Right? It would be negative 5, right? Negative 5 plus 5 would make a zero, so it cannot be a negative 5. How about the next part? It cannot be a negative 4. So virtually what I am doing, I am taking X plus 5 and setting it equal to zero to solve for X. So x is negative 5 here. But we cannot have x be that. So for the second one, what would be my domain? Yep, it could be all reals, but x cannot be negative 3. How? The domain is going to be all real numbers except for x equaling negative 6, right? But look at this one. We have a number in front of that x, so we really need to set that equal to 0. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Okay? Okay, so look. Notice how before I set this one, x plus 5, equal to 0 to solve for my, what my x could not be. On this one, I have 2x minus 3. I'm setting that equal to 0 as well. 
So when I solve for x, I add 3 to both sides, I get 2x equals a positive 3 now. And then x equals 1.5 or 3, ha 3 halves. Okay? So x cannot equal 3 halves here as well. Okay, so what I want you guys to do now is take time to go through the rest of this page and on the back side too and find your domains. Okay, we have this one you need to find a domain for. I need you to find a domain for this one. And the next page, which is right here, find the domain for all three of those. Okay? All right, so now looking at this first one, this one would have been all real numbers. And make sure you guys are using the correct notation on it. Okay, it can be all real numbers except for x not equaling negative 2. On this one, it could be all real numbers, but x cannot equal what? 3. three. Okay, go on to number 6. This one could be all real numbers, but x cannot equal what? 2. And then down here, notice that this is x minus 3 squared. That's really saying x minus 3 times x minus 3. That's the same thing. Okay? But we don't need to repeat ourselves in the domain. We only need to say something once. So it's all real numbers except for x equaling 3. On this one, we have negative 4x minus 16. Now, to make sure that we get this, I'm going to set this equal to 0. Okay, it's not so obvious what it's going to be. I'm going to add 16 to both sides, so that equals negative 4x equals 16. x would then be negative 4. So in our domain, we do not want x to equal negative 4. We do not want that to end up being 0 on the bottom. Now that we've done the domain, I want to talk about vertical asymptotes because they're very much related to the domain. Okay? So a vertical asymptote is a line on the graph that goes up and down, that the, the graph approaches but never touches. Okay? So an example of that would be here. I have my axis right here. It usually is denoted by a um, dotted line. And like, for instance, I have a graph doing that. Notice it's approaching it but not ever touching it. That's a vertical asymptote. Okay? So... After simplifying, we've already factored our numerator and denominator. After simplifying, that means after you cross out all your like factors, whatever factor is left on the bottom, that's your vertical asymptote. For number 1, I crossed out x minus 5. I have left here x plus 4, okay? This is the factor that's left in my domain. I cross that out in my factors above, right? So all I have left is that x equals negative 4. That is my vertical asymptote. Why not negative Because I crossed it out. It simplified out. So... That will come into play on Monday when we talk about holes in the graph. That's going to be a hole. But we're not going to talk about that yet. Number two would be NA because there's nothing left on the bottom. So what is our factor that's left in our domain? That, yep, so it would be X equals 3 over 2. Okay, so now do the same thing with the rest of the sheet, and we'll check in just a minute. Okay, so this one, the vertical asymptote, would still be x equals negative 2, because we didn't cross anything out. 
Okay. I meant negative two. Okay. So on this one, however, if you had factored this out, the x minus threes cancel, right? So we don't have a vertical asymptote on this one. Okay, let's go back to the back side. On this one, if you had factored this out, it would be x minus 3, x plus 1. Did we, did we get to cancel anything out on that one? No. So our vertical asymptote on that one is going to be 2. On this one, did we cancel anything out? No. So our vertical asymptote on this one is going to be 3. And then on the last one, did we cancel anything out on that one? Yes. Did we? If I take out a negative 4, I'm left with x plus 4 on the inside. So could you cancel anything out? No. No. So this would still be x equals negative 4. What if you did like the negative 1? <coughs> wait, wait, wait. Why can't you do x equals negative 4 and then oh, do that? Horizontal asymptotes are the HA. First thing you need to do with these ones is you need to find the degree of both the numerator and the denominator. What I mean by degree is the largest exponent value in the polynomial. So for example, looking at this one, which happens to be the first one on your sheet, <coughs> This is x squared plus 4x minus 5. So what is my degree value on this one? 2. two. So my numerator is a 2. My denominator, what's my degree value on that one? 2. two. If I had um, x to the third in there, what would be my degree? 3. Okay, that would be a degree of 3. What if I had the number just x? What would be my degree? 1. What if I had the number 5? It's just a number. What if I just had only a number there? It would be 0. My degree would be 0. Okay? You need to know that because we're going to be looking at these. Okay, so that's how you find degrees. Right. Okay, so it's just a constant. Right? Anything that is 0 is a constant. All right, so... If the top degree, the numerator degree, is less than the bottom degree, your horizontal asymptote is going to be y equal to 0. So if your top degree, I'm sorry, if the top degree is less than, did I say greater than? Yeah. Oh, sorry, I did that earlier today. If the top degree is less than the bottom degree, then your, your horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. All right? If the top degree is equal to the bottom degree, what you're going to do is you're going to take the coefficients or the numbers in front of that, the two leading ones, and going to set your y equal to that. So on the, on the example number one that we had, both coefficients are 1. So y is going to be equal to 1 in that case. Number 8 gives us this example. Our leading coefficients are x and minus 4x. They both have a degree of 1, but my leading coefficient for this one is a 1, and my leading coefficient for this is a negative 4. So my horizontal asymptote here is going to be y equals negative 1 fourth. If the top degree is greater than the bottom, the asymptote is a slant line. So all you're going to write down, it, I said the asymptote will be a slant line. So all that you'll write down is a diagonal or a slant. 
I'm not going to get into how you find that today because it takes long division with polynomials. So go to your note sheet. Look at this one. This has a degree of 2. This has a degree of 1. So what is my horizontal asymptote going to be? It's going to be what? It's going to be a slant. Okay? How about this one? I have a 1 over a 2. Y equals 0. This is, I already did this one just a minute ago. This is y equals negative one-fourth. Let's go back to the front page. What is my, um, I have them equal on this one, so y is one. How about this one? This is slant because this is to the second degree and this is to the first degree. How about this one? y equals zero. All right. 